before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. As most of you know, if you are a recent subscriber to this channel, this channel's main purpose is deep dives. We look into the weird and the wacky. Now, if you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I myself, off of YouTube and an authorized KPJ, where I authorized Ashtanga teacher. And so I do have a playlist on this channel called Yoga and Shadow Work, where I have offered both a 30-day and a 60-day shadow work challenge, along with a couple of different mini little videos to show you how to get shoulder strength, all that kind of stuff, and the purpose of using exercise as the main tool of spirituality. Now, as many of you guys know, I am a contributor to Gnostic TV currently, and I do have the Esoteric Explorer series, but we've also opened up the Esoteric Health and Wellness series. In the Esoteric Health and Wellness series, we are going through the foundation of spirituality, where we find in a lot of these ancient scriptures, exercise being the cornerstone of any type of spiritual practice. After all, exercise is the root word of exorcism. Now, with that being said, I thought that I would upload a longer uh, movement video to es Esoteric Atlanta. So if you guys like it, it will give you a taster for what's on Gnostic TV in the Esoteric Health and Wellness series. Now, on the Esoteric Health and Wellness series, there is more of a variety of movement. I've got cardio, I've got more movement classes, and we just uploaded quarter primary series from the Ashtanga system. Now, with that being said, what I'm going to be doing today is not traditional yoga. It's not Ashtanga. This is just a basic movement class. We will be using some of the movements from yoga, but other than that, it's literally just a basic movement class. I'm going to be focusing more on strength and mobility than anything. Now, as you can see, I'm in my home. I've got my little exercise area. Like many of you guys, I do, I do my practices from home, even though I do teach outside of the house. If you would like to join me on Zoom for a few of my classes, that will be down in the description box too, and also the link to Gnostic TV if you like what you're doing here and you want more of a variety of exercise. So with that being said, as always, please check with your doctor first before you do this or any other exercise class. Please um, go at your own pace as I say all the time, do not compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 10. I am going to try to make this an all levels class. So hopefully skill wise, these movements won't be too complicated. Just focusing more on the strength element of these practices because the strength element is the most important. Now, what you will need is a yoga mat. Um, I have had somebody ask me what I recommend. I do recommend the Manduka mat. I'm not sponsored by Manduka, anything like that. I just really like Mandukas. Now, with that being said, Mandukas tend to run about $100 a pop for a mat, but they do have a lifetime warranty. So if you're still not quite sure that this is the practice for you, maybe the cheaper mats might work for a while, but they will disintegrate over time. So Mandukas are really great for the long-lasting um, practices. I'm also going to be using a binding towel. At some point now, I might actually have to use two binding towels because I do tend to get a bit sweaty. So I might be using one on my mat and then one for um, some shoulder opening we're going to do later on in the practice. Now, if you don't have a binding towel, you can use a yoga strap or you can use um, a belt from your bathrobe or a rope. Anything that just gives you some length is totally 
totally fine. As always, yoga, along with other any other type of movement class, is typically taught barefoot. This is because we want to work on the kinetic chain of energy starting from the feet that moves all the way up through the body, kind of like a domino effect. The big toe itself, pressing the big toe in the mat, is going to connect to your perineum, which is basically in your crotch. It's a strengthening technique, whereas the arch of the foot is also going to connect with Uddiyana Bandha, which is the pulling in of the core. So starting to really, really work with your feet in these movement classes and engage the foot as much as you can, especially in our modern world where we're stuck in shoes a lot. With that being said, you are in the comfort of your own home. So if you feel like you need to wear shoes, it's totally up to you. Wear something comfortable. And so yeah, with that being said, let's get started. So we're actually going to do this practice today with the lights off for a particular reason. For those of you who are new to the concept of exercise and spirituality, what you can do is start to do this in your own home by lighting a candle before you actually start your practice. You can use the candle to set an intention for your practice so that you're reminding yourself to change your thought around using your body as a spiritual tool instead of abusing your body through exercise. So just take a moment with the lit candle if you choose to set that intention and then place the candle somewhere around your mat. Now we're going to start the practice by pulling back into a child's position with the bottom back, the arms extended, forehead to the mat. And just finding your breath. The breath is associated with the nervous system. Finding the pranic inhale with the upward rising energy to the aponic exhale with downward flowing energy, starting to observe your thoughts knowing that you can't believe everything you think, and then coming up to your hands and your knees, moving into what they call in more contemporary yoga, a cat-cow, which is literally just pulling the stomach in and then flexing the spine. This starts to massage the internal organs, your energy organs, cleansing out the spine, kind of cracking open the ribs, especially if you've been sitting all day. And then pull back again into child's position. Again, this is a beginner level, backslash all level class. So skill-wise, this stuff is going to be pretty basic and easy. Hopefully this will help a lot of people. And then pull back into a downward facing dog. Spread the fingers out. Pull your stomach in. No belly breathing. Belly breathing is not good. We never want to belly breathe. We want to pull the belly in. Push through the backs of your heels, even if your feet do not touch the floor. It's totally fine if your heels don't touch the floor. Just stretch and breathe here. This is an active posture. And then come back to your knees and pull back again into child's position, creating blood flow in the hips and the knees. Spread the fingers out. And then inhale, tuck the toes under again, pull back, downward facing dog. Once again, spread the hands out, this variation of a handstand, so we want to actively be engaged here. And then inhale the right leg up behind you, point the toe and try to separate, try to lengthen the torso by pressing into the floor and pushing the toe up while simultaneously pressing through the left heel. Bring the right foot down, changing sides. Push the floor away from you, pull your stomach in, stretch, 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 and then bring that foot right back down again. Come back down to your knees, pull back, child's position. And then tuck the toes under, downward facing dog again, starting to warm the body up. Inhale that right leg up, stretch, push the floor away from you, and then drop the right heel down to the left butt cheek, opening up the quadricep, push the floor away from you, push through the left heel, and then bring that right leg forward to a high runner's lunge. Hold this high runner's lunge for just a moment as you breathe through your hips, and then drop your back knee to the earth, and sink forward, breathing into that left hip. 
you should feel a nice sizzling sensation happening through that left hip. And then bring your left hand and right hand to the mat. Pull your hips back. Straighten your front leg, your right leg. Flex the foot and walk out half Hanumanasana. If you feel like you can go into a full Hanumanasana, a full split, go ahead and do so. I'm not going to do that right now because I want our beginner students to see the full expression of a half split. Pull the stomach in. The, the purpose of a forward fold is your digestive system. Then sink back into the hips. Bring the hands inside the right foot. Rock the right foot out to the side. Now you can hold it here with the hands on the mat or you can come down to your elbows or you can stay on your elbows and tuck your back toe under, stretching even deeper into your hips. We're still just warming the body up, getting that blood flow into the crevices of the joints. Come back to your hands and then from here we're gonna step back into a plank position. Now let's hold plank for a moment here just to stimulate the strength of the core and the spine. Push the floor away from you. Try to separate the shoulder blades. Pull your core in. Reach energy through your feet. Keep breathing. If you need to drop to your knees, you can. And then pull back downward facing dog. Spread your fingers out. Pull your belly in. And drop to your knees, come back to a child's position. Head, forehead to the mat as you stretch your fingers out. And then tuck your toes under, downward facing dog. Changing sides, inhale the left leg up and then drop that left heel down to your right. Sits bones stretching through the quadricep. Push the floor away from you. And then bring that left leg forward, first to high runner's lunge, setting yourself up. And then drop the right knee to the mat. Bring your hands to your femur bone, avoid the knee joint, come to the femur bone, sink into your right hip flexor. You should be experiencing a sizzling sensation in the right hip flexor. Then bring your hands to the floor, pull your hips back, flex your right foot, and come into that half Hanumanasana, half split, flex the foot. Again, pull your belly in. The primary purpose of a forward fold is to detox your digestive system. Your hamstrings are secondary. But make sure that foot is flexed so the muscles are engaged. And then bring the foot hands inside the left foot. Walk the left foot out to the side. First come to your hands. It's the first positioning for those who are super new. Or you can come to your elbows. Or you can stay on your elbows and come to the ball of your right foot. Keep breathing. Notice any thoughts that are coming up, just observe them. Come back to your hands, step back plank position. Once again, push the floor away from you, pull your navel in, legs are actively engaged, keep breathing. If you need to come to your knees, come to your knees and then pull back, downward facing dog. Stretch the fingers. Notice the blood flow coming in the body and then walk the hands to the feet, hip width apart. Grab your elbows and just hang. We never get to do hip width apart in traditional yoga. So here in this movement class, we're just gonna enjoy this for a moment. Allow the body to really hang, pull your belly button in and then bend your knees, hug your legs and then straighten your legs. Then release your hands to the mat, bend your knees, pull your up belly button in and roll up one vertebrae at a time, coming all the way back up to standing position. From here, bring your feet together and then inhale your arms up and exhale, fold. 
Inhale your head up halfway. Exhale, step back once again, plank position. Really pull the core in, push the floor away from you. If you need to come to your knees, come to your knees. Do not cross your ankles, just come to your knees. Otherwise, pop up, hold the strength, find the fire, pull your core in, breathing here. Steady your mind, and then pull back again, downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg up, stretch, stretch, and breathe. And then bring that right leg forward to a high runner's lunge again. Once again, pushing the chest forward, extending through the back leg, and then if you would like, inhale the arms up, find that 90 degree angle in the right leg, find the fire, pull your core in, and breathe. Steady your thoughts. Don't believe everything that you think. Be the observer. And then hands come back to the floor, left hand to the floor, right arm up, take a nice twist, open the chest towards the ceiling. Very important that we always twist right first. This is because your ascending colon is on the right side of your body. Hands to the floor. Step your back foot in just a little bit, straighten that front leg once again and fold. Pull the belly in. Keep breathing. And then from here, step back again to plank position. Push the floor away from you. Push into all 10 fingertips. Push through the backs of your heels. Pull your belly in. And then pull back, downward facing dog. Inhale your left leg up, changing sides. Bringing that left leg forward to a high runner's lunge. Breathe here, push your chest forward. And if you want, inhale your arms up. Otherwise, just keep your hands on the mat. Pull the belly in, find that 90 degree angle, lean into the fire. You came to your mat on purpose. You did this on purpose. There's power there. Watch your thoughts. Don't believe everything that you think. Keep breathing. Right hand to the floor, left arm up, take a nice twist. Open the chest. And then bring your hand back down to the floor, walk the back foot in and then straighten the front leg and fold. From here, step back again, plank position. Push the floor away from you. Separate your shoulder blades. Pull your belly button into the spine. And pull back, downward facing dog. Pull your belly in, spread your fingers out. And come to your knees, pull your butt back. Sit up for a second and just bring your hands to your heart center. For those who are learning to use exercise as a form of spirituality, I just want to take this moment to pause so you can go inside of your body. I want you to feel the heart pumping, feel the blood moving, feel the nervous system responding. And then come to your hands and knees, flip your wrist around. We're gonna do a stretch into the arms. So by flipping the wrist around, we're allowing the backs of the wrists to stretch in a way they don't typically get to stretch. And then flip the hands back to their regular positioning. Inhale the right arm forward. Hold the right arm forward and then extend the left leg back. Hold it here and breathe. Pull your belly button in. Find a focal point, find a dristi with your eyes. Keep breathing. Pull your belly button in. Slow the breath down and then bring the 
right arm out to the right side and the left leg out to the left side. If you want to, if this is too complicated, just keep the leg and the arm back in their original position. And then come back to center, extend out, stretch the spine. And then come back to a tabletop position. Once again, flip your hands, stretch into your wrist. Release through the arms and then turn them back around to come to the other side. Left arm extends out, right leg extends out. Stretch the spine, pull the belly in. And then take them out. Left arm to the left side, right leg out to the right. Find the balance, find the stability. All balancing postures are strengthening postures. Come back to center, keep breathing. And then hand and leg to the mat, pull back child's position. And then tuck your toes under, downward facing dog. Take a moment to observe the blood flow in the body. Walk your hands to your feet. Inhale your spine up halfway, exhale fold. Grab your elbows again one more time, just hang. And then bend your knees, roll up one vertebrae at a time, massaging the internal organs. From here, step one of your feet out to a wide second position. Toes are facing away from each other. Bend down, pull your stomach in, tuck your butt under. Inner thighs are working. From here, lift the right heel up and down, keeping the ball of the right foot on the ground, keeping your squat, your second position squat, as deep as possible to integrate the inner thigh. You're also stretching out under the foot as you do this. And then change sides, use the left leg, lifting the heel up and down off the mat, keeping the ball of the foot on the mat, keep pulling your core in, keep dropping into your second position. Now drop and come up, up and down, just pulsing. You can go as fast or as slow as you want. If you wanna bring your arms up, you can do that too to get more, to, more of a cardiovascular lift. The deeper you squat, the longer and leaner your muscles will be. This is also affording you some mobility in your hips for those of you who have tight hips. Getting that blood flow to come into that ball and socket joint. Good, breathe, hold it, and then drop the right shoulder down, press the right leg back. Creating a deep stretch to get that blood flow and that flush. And then changing sides. Now from here we're going to change the positioning of our feet. Our toes are now going to face forward and they're going to be a little bit closer together. A little bit wider than your hips but therefore closer together than second position. Pull your belly in. Pull it in. And we're going to sit back into the heels so that you guys can see I'm trying to show you weight is in the heels and we're just going to pulse. Keep the belly pulled in, inner thighs are working, quadriceps are working, core is working, your glutes are working and as always you can control how deep you go into this. You can lift the arms up if you want more cardiovascular work with this but make sure you're sitting back into your heels so your glutes are working. Now we're going to drop and extend up push the hips forward flushing through the hips so we're creating that heat with the little pulses and then we're now we're flushing that heat getting the blood flow into those hip flexors. This is really good for those of you who sit all day at a desk. Now pulse again. Weight in the back of the heels, arms up if you choose to. Otherwise, keep them at prayer position at your heart center. Now bring them together. Bring the legs together. Let's stretch, stretch out the quads, catching your right foot. Push the right foot into the right hand. Breathe and stretch here. Release the blood into that quadricept. And now changing sides, catching the left foot. 
I think next time we will definitely have the lights on, but I wanted you to get a good feel for using candlelight. For those of you who are trying to change your intention of exercise from one of pure uh, physicality to one of spirituality. Now extend out, press the pinkies back. We're going to warm up into the shoulders before we release the shoulders. Pull your belly in. Now bend the elbows, straighten the arms. Bend the elbows, straighten the arms. This is also cracking open your spine. So again, if you sit at a desk all day, this is opening countering all that work you do on computers and cell phones. On some of my videos on Gnostic TV, we do this with weights. Now I'll bring that right arm across the chest, look over your right shoulder, stretch and flush through the deltoid. Now of course some of my videos on Gnostic are a lot longer than these videos and have a lot more different levels. Now from here, we're actually gonna grab the strap or the binding towel. I'm using a binding towel. So you can use a towel or a bathrobe belt or a yoga strap and you're gonna extend the strap up and bring your arms up and over your head. Do not bend your elbows. If you have to bend your elbows, then you need to extend the arms out further apart from each other. If it's too easy for you, then walk the hands in closer together. This should give you a very nice burn and release through your shoulders and through your shoulder blade. Keep going. Again, be very honest with yourself on where your hands need to be. You don't have to go as fast as me. You can go slower than me if you need to. Now inhale the arms up, bring the legs together, lift up and stretch over to the right. And then come back to center and stretch over to the left. Good, okay. Drop your binding towel, your prop, shake the body out for a moment. Now we're gonna come into a nice flush of the body. So these are modified jumping jacks for those who are new. We're extending the arms and the legs up in a rapid movement. But if you wanna go into the full jumping jacks, go ahead and do so. We're only doing about 20 of these. In my more cardio-based classes or my longer classes, I'll have you do a whole lot more of this kind of stuff. But for this particular class, we just wanna take a few minutes just to truly flush everything out. Cardio means heart, vascular system is the vein system, and so we're flushing the blood. Now step the right leg back, put a lunge into your left. We're gonna do a couple slow. This is to get the abdominals, pull the foot in, step it back. Pull the right leg in, step it back. Now you can go slow or you can go quick now with me. We're doing 20 of these. So this is strengthening the abdominals while also detoxing the organs, the vital organs, releasing trapped energy within those vital organs. We're also working the arms and the legs, the full body experience. Keep going, you got this. Go slower if you have to. Now step back, stretch into your calf for a moment. Just release that calf. And then we're gonna come back to center and we're gonna flush again. We have to flush between sides because the right side of the body and the left side of the body hold two totally different karmas, two totally different energies. And so we flush between sides. We do that in traditional yoga and a lot of really good personal trainers also know this and will have people flush as well. So that is something I look for in teachers and in trainers. Do they flush you between each side? Because that's important to do the flush. So keep going. All right, we're gonna change sides. So now we're gonna step the left leg back, bend into the right leg. Extend the arms up, we're gonna do two slow. Pull in, extend back, pull in, extend back. Now, if you wanna go fast with me, go fast with me. Otherwise, stay slow, it's no big deal. Stay where, do not compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 10. Go where you can go in this here now moment. The body will change, everything will change. But keep going, you got this. Step back and stretch into that calf now. Now we're gonna bring the legs together, sit back, zip the legs up. We're gonna extend the right leg out first with the arms. Extend it out, bring it back in. Out, 
in. So we're working the legs and the arms. You can go faster if you want to while pulling that belly button in, stabilizing the core. Keep breathing. Good. Now sit back then flush. So we're sitting back and flushing. Same thing we did earlier, but now our legs are together. So it's giving a different sensation of a stretch or a release through the hips. But this is the flush between sides. You got this. You can sink lower or not as low depending on where you are in your work. All right, changing sides. You can go slowly or you can speed it up. It's totally up to you. Keep balancing on the stagnant leg. The stagnant leg is in an isometric hold. That's what ups the metabolism and burns the calories. Good. Now coming back to that flush again, pulling the legs together, sitting back, pushing forward. Flush it out. Flush the energy, flush the karma, burn the karma, then flush it out. Now sit back, zip the legs together, pull your tummy in and just slap the ceiling, palms face up. Keep your core engaged, keep your legs squeezing together, that pelvic floor is working and those bundas are working, and slap the ceiling. Keep going, get that tricep involved, those back muscles involved, you got this, keep going. Good, shake it out, shake it out. From here, we're going to make our way back down to the mat, so taking a forward fold, coming back to a tabletop position, then pull your butt back again, child's position. If you're feeling a little bit more open now, maybe separate the knees a little bit wider. And then come back to that tabletop position. Now we're going to take the right leg. I know that's my left, but please use your right first. Bend your knee and then place the ankle on top of the Achilles heel of the left foot and we're gonna pulse up. Squeeze your butt cheek as you lift your leg while simultaneously pushing the floor away from you, keeping your core engaged, belly button pulling into the spine. You do not have to go as fast as me. Just make sure you're moving and squeezing that butt cheek. Hopefully this will relieve some back pain for some people by giving the glutes some more strength to support the base of the spine. Keep going. Hold the leg up, extend it out, point the toe, tap it to the right side, then lift over, tap to the left. This is giving some mobility to your hip. Really using that ball and socket joint that does not get used as we grow up and start sitting at a desk all day. So we're, we're exercising that ball and socket joint. Keep pointing the toe, keep the, the core pulled in, keep pushing the floor away from you. As Jane Fonda used to say, feel the burn. Burning is good. Now hold the leg up, bring your left elbow down to the mat, right leg extends. Pull the knee into the right elbow, extend out right knee to right armpit rather extend out keep going this is crunching up those obliques it's also working the opposite leg has been working this whole time in that isometric hold whole body is engaged keep pulling the core in as you work those obliques you got this again you don't have to go as fast as me you can go slower than me no big deal hold your leg up point the toe and pulse 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 keep it up Keep crunching that butt cheek. Pull your belly in. Push the floor away from you with the extended arm and then push into the forearm of the arm, the opposite arm that's on the floor. Good. Now pull back into a child's position for a moment. Flush the blood. Keep breathing here, pushing back through the sits bones, extending your arms out. And then let's keep flushing before we go to the other side. Find that plank position again. Drop the knees, lift the knees. Drop the knees, lift the knees. We're doing the knees together as you push the floor away from you, just flushing through, evening out the body's energy before we get to the other side. Keep going. You got this. If this is too complicated for you now, you can just hold a plank position or drop to your knees in a modified plank position. Hold here, good. Now from here, I'm actually gonna turn around so you can see the other side. You don't have to turn around though. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. 
So bring that back, that the next leg, the other leg, bring the ankle to the Achilles heel, lift up, point your toes, push the floor away from you. We're working the other side of the body now. Keep breathing. Exercise is supposed to be uncomfortable. Only when we experience the friction of discomfort are we then able to observe our true thoughts and our true vulnerabilities. When we experience the friction of being uncomfortable, only then can we see the ego for what it is. Now I'm gonna have to move here because I just knocked my sofa. Some of you might have some of that problems too. Point the toe and bring it side to side again, moving in that hip socket. Now the hips do carry a lot of trauma. We do carry a lot of emotion in the hips. It's the biggest joint in the body. And so a lot of times people will experience maybe some unpleasant emotions when they do hip work. Good. If you're feeling some unpleasant emotions right now, just observe them. Your body is detoxing not just sweat, but also thought. All right, bring the opposite elbow down, extend the leg out, pull your knee to your armpit. Knee to armpit. Again, working those obliques. So you're not just working the obliques, you're not just working the physical body, you're also working the energetic body and the emotional body because our emotions, our thoughts are stored within our body and it's causing undue stress on the body. And so part of that exercising is exercising the shadow work out. Now lift and pulse, pulse, pulse. Again, the root word of exorcism is exercise. We're removing our own demons, our own shadow work, our own attachments. Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha, as it says in the first pada of the Yoga Sutras. Good. From here, pull back into that child's position. Release the blood into the glutes, in through the hips. Just breathing here and then come up to your forearms. We're going to come into a forearm plank, although I am quite sweaty. So I'm going to be taking my binding towel now and placing it on my mat. Sweat is good. We need to sweat. That's how we detox. That's how our body cleanses. So coming to that forearm plank, push the ground away from you. Pull your belly button into your spine. If you need to modify, drop your knees. Do not cross your ankles. We're going to be here for a few breaths. Once again, if you go to Gnostic TV in the link below, I have other videos, exercise videos, where we will hold things like planks for a little bit longer. This is geared more towards beginners, though, or an all-level experience. Do the best you can. Watch your thoughts. Watch the negotiations of the mind, the negotiations of the ego. Find the vulnerability and the truth, and then come to your knees for a second and just release your shoulders back in that child's position. Drop the head down. I've strategically placed these child's, the child position throughout this exercise video, especially for the beginners, to take a moment of pause between each section to catch your breath and to really integrate what you are doing. Now from here, we're gonna come into some light abdominal work. Clasp the hands together, bend your knees, zip your legs together, twisting, pulling the core in, rocking back, going side to side. Now if you need a little bit more fire, lift your legs here. Or you can alternate between lifting the legs or dropping the legs. Just make sure you have that core engaged and that you're leaning back. Once again, you control how intense this is. It is within your power to make this more intense or less intense. Just keep breathing. Know that you are a lot stronger than you think you are. You are a lot stronger than your mind will tell you that you are. Just keep breathing, keep pumping, and keep working. Thoughts are going to come up. Now bring the hands behind you. Extend the legs out. Pull them in. Extend out. Pull in. Extend out. Pull in. Crunching the stomach while also using the legs. Keep going. The mind's going to get all sorts of agitated as you start to exercise. It's supposed to. It's supposed to be triggered. It's okay. 
Now from here, we're gonna engage the glutes before, once again, before we close out this practice, this workout. Extend your feet, point them out away from each other and lift your hips, just lift up. You can bring the arms up if you want to. You're just pulsing the hips up, once again, flushing through your hip flexors while crunching the butt to support the lower back. Oftentimes, we think of the core as just being the stomach. The core is also the butt and the back. From here, we're starting into your cool down. So I want you to take that binding towel again and bring it around the ball of your right foot. Now, some of you are gonna be able to catch your foot. I still want you to use the binding towel. Pull the leg in, lift, bring the leg diagonally over to your left shoulder while keeping your right butt cheek on the mat. This is giving a stretch to the IT band into the outer outer leg of that right leg and then release that leg and let's change sides. So bring that binding towel to the ball of the left foot. Pull it in for a second, just releasing into the hamstring and then reach it diagonally over to your right shoulder, keeping your left hip on the mat to get the outer leg, the IT band and the outer leg, finding that release, that stretch. And then from here, release the binding towel to the side, bend your knees, take your right ankle to your left femur bone, and then pull the left leg in, stretching into the right hip. Bring your breath into that hip. And then changing sides. left ankle to right femur bone. Bring the breath into that left hip now. And then release, pull the knees into the chest and come up to a seated position. Cross your legs, we're just gonna do a basic twist as you get more experience, twisting will become a lot more aggressive. So if you're new, just enjoy this for now. Just a basic twist, wringing out the spine, wringing out the organs. And then extend the legs out into Upavishta Konasana, flex your feet. And then walk out as far as you can, doesn't have to be far at all, just stretching, keep the feet nice and flexed. Come up, walk over to your right leg, catch your foot. Keep the left leg nice and flexed. Then changing sides. Come back up, bring the legs together. And slowly lower down to your mat for final rest and meditation. I'm gonna put my binding towel over me because I do get kind of cold after I practice, after I've been sweaty. Close the eyes, palms face up. Let everything release into the ground. The Sukhasana position, this is the act of no asana, the act of no movement. Just take this time to observe the feelings within your body, the blood pumping through the body. Observe the nervous system, and any thoughts that happen to move through your head, just let them go. Observe them and let them go. Now this is where I will leave you. You're welcome to stay on your mat in a resting meditative position for as long as you see fit. We do wanna stay down most of the time for a minimum of about two minutes to allow the body to totally, totally detox everything that you've just experienced in your workout or practice but nonetheless you are welcome to stay here in this relaxed position for as long as you need to again if you would like to see more of these practices different levels of these workouts a video on traditional yoga all that kind of stuff 
you can find that down in the description box below under the Gnostic TV link and the Esoteric Health and Wellness series. As always, I hope that you guys enjoyed this practice, this workout today. I thank you so much for doing this with me. You should be very, very proud of yourself, especially if you are new to this kind of work. It takes a lot of courage to go on the initiate's path. And the initiate's path starts and ends with the physical body.